What is going on guys? Welcome back to Stampede Airsoft. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Z series of AKs from LCT Airsoft. LCT makes some of the nicest AKs in the airsoft industry. Pairing that with on these rifles with some of the Gucciest accessories from Zenico. For all of you non-AK fanboys out there, Zenico makes some of the nicest external components for real steel AKs. The three rifles that I have in front of me right now are the PP1901, the ZK104, which is an AK104 with the Zenico furniture on it, and then the small, then the smaller one back here is a ZKS 74UN, which you guessed it is an AK 74 with the Zenico furniture on it. For the most part, all three of these rifles are pretty similar, uh, but they do have small differences here and there. Moving from tip to butt on these rifles, on the 104 and the 74, they have these nice big muzzle brakes up here at the front with some. Um, mild orange paint on it and then the PP19 has a little bit smaller of a flash hider because it's only supposed to be shooting 9mm where these shoot 545 if they were real AKs. Moving back from that you have your front sight post slash gas block area on these rifles. Most of the components on these rifles are made of real stamped steel so if you were to take anything magnetic and stick them to the rifles on these parts it would stay. All of the other Zenico parts are made out of an aluminum where and then the pistol grips are made out of polymer or a plastic. Right behind the front sight and gas block area is this nice Zenico quad rail that is featured on all three of these rifles. This allows you to mount any lasers, pack boxes, flashlights, foregrips, all the stuff that you want to mount on an AK but you usually can't. And then right behind that on the PP19 and the 104 it has this standard adjustable leaf rear leaf sight and then here on the 74 it has a more traditional um, canyon and peak um, set of iron sights where you have to line the front sight post up with the little canyon in the back. Then also on the PP19 and the 104, they have these, uh, these dust cover um, rail segments, making it very easy to mount any sort of optic without you needing the overhang um, optic mount. On the 74, it does not have that rail segment, so you're still gonna need that traditional optic mount. Down below that on the receiver is all of the traditional fire controls that you're familiar with from AKs from the past. So you have your big fire selector, which in the top position is in safe, the middle position is full auto, and all the way down is semi. Then you have the big old charging handle, which if you pull back on that, will reveal your standard AK slash version 3 style hop up which is just a little slider making it very easy to make fine hop up adjustments. Traditionally these do not come undone very easily and I do not expect anything different from these rifles from LCT. On the 104 and the 74 they take these standard um, 74 style magazines or 545 magazines so when it comes to taking the magazine out and putting a new one in it is the same from every other AK. Got to do the little rock in, and then hit the paddle and rock it back out. But with the PP19, because it is nine millimeter and it is based off of the real PP19, it is more um, attuned to that of the MP5, where you hit the paddle and it comes straight out. In the box, you get two magazines for the PP19, and they're coupled together, um, so you can do super fast reloads with it. All you do is switch it over to the next one. The 74 and the 104 are compatible with any 545 slash 74 style magazines where the PP19 has to take PP19 mags um, and the only people that I've seen make them are LCT. Then when it comes down to the rest of the fire controls with the trigger, it is the same mushy, kind of mushy trigger that we expect from most stock guns. These do have regular trigger contacts in them, no MOSFET or anything like that. And then the grip on the 104 and the 74 are the same exact pl quite plasticky um, 
uh, pistol grips that we're used to seeing, where the PP19 has this kind of quite modern, um, almost M4 pistol grip design. As you may have noticed, um, these guns don't have big old fixed stocks, so they are wired underneath the dust cover. All three of these guns are wired to small type Tamiya, and just like right, just like most AKs that are wired under the dust cover, it is a pain trying to fit a battery in here. Your best bet is going to be trying to fit one of the flat 11-1 LiPos that are made for AKs. That's gonna give you the most clearance and they're gonna fit the best in all three of these guns. And on top of that, they have a small amount of area um, cleared out up here at the front for you to slide the battery in so you have more clearance for all your wiring and stuff like that. One thing I noticed while trying to get the battery compartment open on these guns is how firm and stiffly placed the uh, the dust covers are. They are not as simple as pushing it on the button and pulling up on it. It does take a little bit of force. I actually had to use a flathead screwdriver to try and pry these off, which is a good and a bad thing. Bad because if you're on the field and your gun's running dead and you need to switch batteries, you're not gonna be able to do it pretty fast and more than likely the enemy is gonna be up on you before you uh, switch batteries. But good, because if you ever dump this rifle on the ground or you run into something, you don't have to worry about your dust cover popping open and your battery possibly falling out and you misplacing it or you breaking your battery or some of the internal parts. Lastly, on these rifles, you have the Zenico style stock, which is adjustable for length of pull and even the cheek riser. So to adjust how far back it goes out, there's this small little metal flap, you flip it open, and you can pull it out to whatever position you want. They are very precise positions, so if you are in, posi in between each position, the flap will not go down. Just make sure you have it pulled exactly into the slots before you try to flip it down or it won't work. To adjust the cheek riser, there are three little screws that take a standard Allen key size. You will undo them a little bit. You don't have to take them all the way out and then you can raise and lower this to whatever position you want. Keeping on the topic of the stock, they do fold over to the side, which is very nice. Um, so towards the rear of the receiver, there's this small button. It's quite stiff when brand new, but you will press in on that and the stocks will fold over to the side. They will stay there, they will not come undone. You can't just pull them off to get them open again. There's a small button towards on the very back of the gun once the stock is folded over and is again quite stiff, but you will press it up on that and then you can pull the stock out and fold it back over into its original position. The build quality on these AKs is probably some of the best I've ever seen. They are very solid, they do not move, um, creak, anything like that. Because of how firm they are, like I said earlier, the dust covers barely come open. So you do not have to worry about any like moving parts or anything breaking off on you because of how robust these rifles are. They are, for the most part, steel, stamped steel, just like how real AKs are made, except for the Zenico accessories that are made of something different. And these aren't the only super nice AKs that LCT makes. They make tons of other AKs in tons of different styles. They've got wood, they've got regular um, polymer uh, furniture, and then they have these really nice ones. And then if you don't want an AK, they make tons of other stuff too. Their AKs are their bread and butter. After taking all three of these guns back to the chronograph, I got some pretty good results. Not that I was expecting anything less from LCT. In all of these guns, I was using 0.20 gram BBs and a Titan Power 11.1 lithium ion battery. In the 104, I was getting about 420 to 425 FPS and 20 balls a second. In the 74, I was getting about 405 FPS to about 415 FPS with, again, 20 balls a second on full auto. And then on the PP19, I was getting 405 to about 410 FPS, also with 20 balls a second. Those FPSs might be a little bit high for your local field, um, so you might have to end up changing out a spring. Most LCTs do come shooting hot out of the box. Most people who buy them know that they will have to downgrade the spring or some other parts 
to be able to use them at their local field or anywhere else. If you do plan on using these rifles, I would recommend using the 11 -1 LiPo for them because that's going to give you the best performance, best um, trigger response, and best rate of fire. Your only issue is going to be finding a battery that's going to fit in these. And then BB weight, I, would ne I wouldn't go anything lighter than a 2.5. You could probably even get 2.8s out of these things and have no issue. All three of these rifles are available in store and will soon be up on our website at stampedeairsoft.com. The PP-19 is retailing for $465.95, the 104 is going for $529.95, and the 74 is going for $415.95. Now I know that's quite expensive for an airsoft gun. You could probably find some real old Cold War AKs for close to this price, but you're not going to be able to have as much fun with a real AK, um, obviously for legal reasons. Um, but these are the best of the best when it comes to AKs. Obviously there's cheaper out there, but cheaper means less quality control and not as well made. These are some of the best you can get. LCT is the way to go for any AK. As always, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Go check out our Facebook and Instagram page to keep up to date with all the new stuff going on at the shop and at the field. And I will see you guys next time.